All right, if you've completed the experiments and you did a little wafting to smell um, the, um, uh, the powders that we were using in our experiments, or if you just watched me complete the experiment, that's okay. Um, we're about to move on to another day where uh, we read through an article together and you can go ahead and answer questions. So this is called All About Alum. Now, if we were back at the school, we would be experimenting with something called alum, which is another uh, white powder uh, that we would be experimenting with. Maybe you remember alum from, from your third grade chemistry uh, unit, but uh, since we're not experimenting with it, uh, we're going to do a quick lesson on it today. All about alum. Well, so as I said, we'll not be experimenting with it. I'm not going to have your parents go out uh, and get alum. Uh, <laughs> the other um, powders were pretty easy to find, probably right in your cabinet. So alum. Alum makes food crunchy. So if you can take you take a look at the photo here, you can see um, pickles, for example. Um, alum is used to make foods like that crunchy. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Sounds like the cafeteria at school where Mr. Fabian stays away from if he can. Uh, that is a satisfying sound when you bite into a carrot or a slice of a pepper. Many people like to eat crisp, crunchy foods. How can we make sure that your dinner vegetables stay crunchy? You can use something called alum in your recipe. Alum is sold in grocery stores as a pickling spice. You'll find it alongside the, con the other common kitchen spices. In the 1950s, pickle recipes often called for this type of alum to make the pickles taste sour. This is because when alum is added to water, it is an acid like lemon juice or vinegar. The acidity makes pickles safe to eat. It stops the growth of bacteria which could make people sick. Alum also keeps pickles from getting mushy and gives them a nice crisp crunch. So if you take a pickle out of a jar, it might've been in alum to keep it crunchy. So question number one, how does alum impact food? All right, alum makes food crispy and crunchy. So you can see up here, there's evidence to support that. It makes food crispy and crunchy. Cooking is not the only place where the acidity of alum can have benefits. Alum can also be an option people choose for personal hygiene. Bacteria mixed with sweat can cause body odor, right? Uh, companies sell large alum crystals for people to use under their arms. These, these large crystals are often called deodorant rock. Their acidity kills off the bacteria that can make underarms smelly, especially after recess if we were in the classroom. Alum's natural acidity can also be used for medical reasons, such as helping prevent wounds from becoming infected. For this reason, alum sometimes uh, use, is used as an ingredient in certain toothpaste. These toothpastes are used to treat gum disease. Alum can relieve sores inside the mouth and boost the effects of vaccines. Kind of important today. Uh, kicking the immune system into action to help protect people from disease. As you can see, alum is very useful. So my question here, number two, is how is alum useful uh, for medical issues, All right? So we see multiple uh, examples of alum being used for medical issues, um, such as helping prevent wounds from becoming in infected. Alum is used in some vaccines to kickstart the immune system. Interesting. I wonder if it's, it's alum is used in the, um, in the uh, COVID vaccines, I'll have to look that up. Along with cooking and medical uses, alum was once used to limit the amount of ink absorbed by paper. <clears throat> this process is called sizing. Alum did, not, did stop paper from absorbing excess ink. However, the acidity of the alum eventually destroyed the paper and anything on it. Because of the possible damage, the use of alum to size paper decreased sharply in the 1980s. Today, most paper is made with chemical sizing agents that do not contain acid. These papers are often labeled as acid-free products. There are several types of alum. Most of them contain aluminum. As the name suggests, aluminum is what kitchen foil is made of. 
It is metal, it is a metal and looks silvery and shiny, silver and shiny. However, alum is not a metal. Like sugar and salt, all types of alum are crystals. Potassium or potash alum and sodium or soda alum are both white crystalline solids at first, at first glance. They are similar to salt and sugar. Also like salt and sugar, these types of alum do not have an odor. How can we tell salt, sugar, potash alum and soda alum apart from one another? Right, we'll, we'll, we're experimenting this week with salt, sugar, and, um, and a couple other powders, but not alum this week. So question number three is salt, sugar, and alum are all types of, it's actually a statement, are all types of, well, as I look back, salt, sugar, and alum are all types of crystal. All about alum. Taste could be helpful. Alum tastes sour. Therefore, this property could help separate alum from salt and sugar. However, it would not help sort potash alum from soda alum. Also, it is not safe to taste unknown chemicals. Very important. Again, with the experiments, even though some of them are, are used in the kitchen, I don't want you to use taste when you're experimenting. It's a bad habit. The other properties should be used instead. Crystal shape can, can sometimes help scientists tell materials apart. Alum crystals look like two pyramids attached at their bases. That is very different from what salt and sugar crystals look like. So uh, there might be a question about the shape of alum. Alum crystals look like two pyramids attached at their bases. All about alum. This cover indicates the scrapbook paper is acid free. That's the scrapbook paper is acid free. See, it says acid, lignin, and PVC free. But how can different types of alum be distinguished? Chrome alum can be easily picked out because it's dark purple color. It does not contain aluminum. You might remember from third grade when we, um, we did some experiments with alum, it turned purple when certain liquids were, were poured on it. It can be added to other alums to grow beautiful purple crystals. Depending on how much chrome alum is used, these crystals can range from light lavender to deep amethyst purple. And this is kind of cool. This is alum up close. Alum crystals look like two attached pyramids pointing in opposite directions. So question number four is, what is the shape of an alum crystal? Again, two attached pyramids pointing in opposite directions. All right, good luck with your puzzle piece today. Enjoy, and again, I hope you've enjoyed the experiments this week. Next week, we'll move on to uh, famous African-American scientists for the week, and then we'll get back to chemistry.